It's really an honor to be here with you today. So before I begin, I would like to share some of my photos that I have snapped during my agile training at Japan on 2019. So the happy smiles without mask was a memory before. He's Mr. Nagase, the agile cost trainer. He's my agile trainer. He has his own agile community team. So the total hours of this agile cost from basic to advanced is 56 hours. Okay, so uh, the agile is not only for software projects. We could utilize the tricks and methods in all our works. So for example, as a lecturer, could use the method to teach his or her students. And also the students could use to complete the project and a leader to manage the team. And today I'm going to share with you the agile and the importance of it. So how we could organize the projects around small things and why that is such an effective way to work and how we actually could prioritize the projects, how we can set up one week to one month sprints to gain momentum and also how we could conduct daily stand-up meeting. And here I am Yuva from Yuva Sun Gravity. The company is located in Johor Bahru JBCS and uh, our business scopes are the firstly Japan recruitment we hire engineers and send them to work at Japan uh, to our client companies. And secondly, software, mobile application development. And third, we focus on agile training. Well, let's begin. Okay, so this agile basic course, it actually takes almost six hours, but today we only have one hour. So, uh, therefore, I'll direct to the points with some examples. There is no definition slides or Agile manifesto. So, just to give you an overview of Agile. And the purpose of today's seminar is to introduce our Agile training to students and encourage you all to join YG's next advanced course. Okay, so what is in Agile? The basic idea is to measure exactly what is being done and how well to strive for continuous improvement. So, Agile, using this Agile, we don't just get better once, get better constantly. So always be looking for something to improve. And as we can see here at this pie chart, Agile, he is not a single player. He has his own team who actually works together to give a better outcome. So here are his partners, 56% of Scrum. He plays the main role in Agile and the sub roles, it is um, made by hybrid Scrum Burn, Scrum XP, hybrid Kanban and so on. But today I will not touch on all of it. We'll explain only on the importance points. Okay, so the beauty of Agile are the key components. Okay, so the beauty of Agile here are the key components. So I'd like to direct your attention to Scrum. Scrum is a technique used in Japanese manufacturing. In Scrum, there is a cycle called PDCA. I'm sure you all know about this. Plan, do, check, and act. So can apply this cycle to the production of just about anything, be it a car, video game, assignment, project, or even a paper airplane. So let's check it out how we actually can use this Scrum. Okay, so here I am. Uh, let me illustrate this, how to do Scrum uh by using paper airplanes so i'm not going to do the demonstration yet i'm just going to last like this so the goal here is to build as many paper airplanes that could fly across the room so the first we divide people into teams three rows in the team one person will check so how many plans 
uh, how many planes are built that can actually fly. And another person will work on assembly process. Also pay attention to the process itself. And also look for ways the team actually can make better, how they actually can make it better and speed up their production. And the others, everyone concentrates on building as many things that can actually fly. So one minute, they have one minute plan how they are going to build the airplane. Three minutes to do. Actually, they build and test as many airplanes as they can actually fly. And finally, they have two minutes to check. So in this case, the team looks for how they actually could improve their paper airplane building process. They may have their own method to fold the papers to a plane. So here, they could now identify what went right, what went wrong, and should the design be changed, how can the construction process be improved, and they will act on that. So change the way of working based on real environmental input. Firstly, we plan, do, check, and then finally, we act based on it. So whether you are making paper airplanes on a real project, you will get better, significantly better. So on the order of two to three times faster, at least double the quality. So the PDCA cycle is how the Toyota became the number one car company in the world. Okay. So now we know how to do the scrum using this PDCA, but when and how to check the work with your team. So next, let's call the other partner, the sprint. Okay, so here we have the sprint. So let's say using the sprint, every Thursday, for example, every Thursday, UITM team sit down and look at the massive backlog of things they have to do. So everything from prototyping, uh, this is maybe to uh, design a new chemistry lab at UITM. So the prototyping a new chemistry lab room designed to testing the devices. So UITM here, they prioritize that list and they say, okay, given that list, how many things actually can we do this week? And by do means they mean done, done completely. So for example, this week to paint and arrange the tables. End of spring, the room must be painted, the tables, and must be arranged. So for each week, each spring. Okay, so how do we actually create the list? Um, we will have a huge white board, and the board is divided into few columns. But since now everything is moved to virtual, uh, we have a trailer board online to manage the task list. Okay, so backlog, doing, done. These are the three columns that we will have on a whiteboard. So each sprint, remember they actually put into the backlog column as many posts they think they can get it done by that week. So as the week goes by, members, they move sticky to doing. So when it's done, like this. So this is how it looks alike. So from the backlog, they move the sticky note to doing. And when it's finished, it will get moved to done. So everyone on the team, they actually can see what everyone else is working at every moment. So the important point, nothing gets moved to done unless it can be used by customer. But in our case, the students example, if someone tests and says, doctor, the balance is not working. That problem is built within the next spring. So this springs called time box. So they are the set of duration. You don't do one week spring and then a three week spring. You have to be consistent. So one crucial element of this individual spring, once the team commits, what they are going to accomplish this week, the tasks are locked in. So example, team A, assigned to paint the room. Now, nothing else can be added by anyone outside the team because interfering and distracting the team slows its speeds dramatically. So 
scrum the scrum running four weeks straight and our goal was not just to be a good thing but the best okay so here from the spring each spring is an opportunity to do something totally new each day a chance to improve so now it's time to call the spring's brother so we have spring retrospective after team has shown what they have accomplished during the last spring the thing that is done and the product can be potentially shipped to customer in other case the director so for example in our case the director comes for an inspection and to provide feedback so the uitm team they sit down with the director and think about what went right what could have gone better and what can be made better in the next spring so what is the improvement in the process that they as a team can implement right away so that's where it comes retrospective meeting the key getting to the x step so this is what we call kaizen which will actually change the process and make it better the next time happiness metric why suddenly we have happiness metric we we'll tell you why later so the lecturers and professors are the pillars of every university for a company every individual person in the team are the pillars so at the end of each spring each person on the team answer just a few questions this is actually to determine the happiness metric on a scale from 1 to 5 how do you feel about your role in the company or the university on the same scale how do you feel about the university as a whole so why do you feel that way what one thing would make you happier in the next spring so each person in the team they actually take a turn so this sparks really insightful conversation okay and now here we back why this happiness metric in a jar because together the team usually they come up with a kaizen quite quickly so what we think is most important for the company we reap productivity simply by asking what would make people happy as a result our lecturers and professors were happier and our students scores dramatically shot up so for a company if the customers were happier revenue dramatically shot up so this is the main reason of using happiness metric in a jar i will move to the next okay so we have done um the spring retrospective and here how to bring the teams together so we have a very special person here the daily stand up meeting okay so everyone on the team every single day to discuss how they were performing getting everyone in a room is key so it's good to practice uh, it, it is actually good to practice before start lesson or before start every shift because it gives the team the opportunity to self organize around the challenges so if someone was stuck with a problem the impediment could block the sprint so the meeting was held at the same time every day before the shift and everyone have to be there so if 9 am the shift starts 8:45 am the team has to be there so and during this daily stand up meeting this meeting couldn't last more than 15 minutes it must be crisp direct to the point so if something required further discussion note it and meet after the daily meeting so during the stand up meeting everyone they have to actively participate they have to stand up they have to actively listening and talking and that way it will keep the meeting short so for example i did this and i do that then on the next person so quickly figured out how they could work together as a team so to be crisp 
and direct to the point, the scrum master, uh, okay, the scrum master, the person, the person in charge of running the process. So he asked each team member three questions. So what did you do yesterday to have the team finish the sprint? What will you do today to have team finish the sprint? And what obstacles are getting in the team's way? So these are the three questions that the team will really practice every day during this daily stand-up meeting. And very important point is highly disciplined team increase their productivity eight times. So the scrum is so revolutionary. You can get more stuff done faster and cheaper twice the work in half the time. This backlog is here. Okay, so I call this backlog as scum sister. So she is here now. Create a backlog. It can be hundreds of items long or contain only a few things that you need to figure out first. So you need a clear idea of what you want at the end of the work. So it could be a product, a wedding, a chemistry lab painting. So once you have a vision, you need to consider what it will take to make that happen. So the questions are, you need to ask, what items have the biggest impact that are most important to customers? That can make money and are easiest to do. So it could be just a small part of a larger project. If you are planning a chemistry lab, what needs to be done in first? So for example, in product development, software development, there is 80% of the value is only in the 20% of the future. So in anything that you buy, most of the value, most of what people want, it is actually only in fifth person what has been built. So what if you could start delivering things five times faster than your competitor with five times value? So that's a winning hand. So what we have to know here from this backlog, what do we do tomorrow? What's the most important to the customer? How do we deliver the value to them faster than anyone else? It isn't what you want to accomplish. It's figuring out what you can accomplish. So this is the key to prioritize the work because we not only have few backlogs, we have hundreds of backlogs here. So we use these keywords to prioritizing the work. So for example, from product backlog, and this is how we prioritize the product backlog. Okay, so next. Who's in the next list is velocity. Prioritize the work, how to prioritize the task from hundreds of backlogs. So we have plan poker. So basically it is to estimate fairly quick and accurate on how much effort, time, money, the project will take and furthermore we have to do one more thing at a time so for this we actually have a little exercise uh, to know this better on this but this is actually for advanced course so i will just continue with this so once you have your velocity so why we need this once you have this velocity you actually can figure out the most important thing in scrum what you actually can know is what is keeping you from going faster in completing your software development or what is keeping you from accelerating. So, this one, we will be continuing this in our advanced course. Here now, the stories. People think in narratives in stories. So that's how we actually understand the world. We have an intimate grasp of characters, desires, and motivations. First thing, 
considering the task as a character or role. For example, a customer, a bride, a reader, a student, an employee, or who is this task being done for? So think of the what, what we want to do or to done on the first case. So where to start and where to stop. So why does this character want this thing? How is it going to serve and delight this particular customer? So the key question here is why? Why does he want that functionality? So what purpose will it serve him? So before you prioritize what needs to be done for your business, you need to define the character, the user, the customer. So the person who is actually going to use what you are going to develop. So know their likes, dislikes, patience, enthusiasm, frustrations, and joy. The result of this, we could be the best product for our customer. Next, the stories partner. How to write stories. Imagine a story about Amazon.com. Okay, so let's imagine about this story. Uh, as a customer, I want the world's biggest online bookseller so that I can buy any book that I want at any time I want. But this is really too big to actually to do anything with. So. What I have to do here is I need to break this down, really down. So I have to write stories like, as a customer, I want to be able to borrow books by January so that I can find the types of books I like. As a customer, I want to put a book into a shopping cart so that I can buy it. So written to our case, the chemistry lab. As a lecturer, I want the room with blue painted walls and I want the walls to have the drawings on chemistry equipments so that students they actually can recall the names. So in this case we have to break this down into really manageable pieces. So a discussion can actually ensure about how to implement them. So the team decides how work will be accomplished but what will be accomplished is decided by business value. We have to consider the time and also the money. These are what we call the cause of action. So in real projects, if the stories are really ready, the team will double the speed of implementation. And if the stories are really done at the end of every spring, teams they can double speed again. So this is one of the tricks needed to get twice as much work done in half the time. Therefore, we have spring planning. So what happens here in spring planning? Everyone gets together, look at the list of stories that have to be done. And there are few questions lies in just how fast the team is going. So this will be continued on next advanced course. Okay, so this is essential. The happy is success. Generally, happy people simply do better at home, at work, in life. They make more money. They have better jobs, they graduate from college, and they live longer. Happy people sell more stuff, make more money, are less likely to leave their jobs, and are healthier. So the people actually, they aren't happy because they are successful. The key here is they are successful because they are happy. So how do we make ourselves and our employee, our fellow team members happy? How do we channel that happiness into greater productivity and revenue? Connection. The more people connected are to other people at work, 
the happier they are. Apparently, the more productive and innovative as well. So, create these connections not only on one team or in one department, but across the whole company or the whole university. And not just between people at one level, but between different levels. So everyone from VPs to accounts receivable clerk. What they don't have here is authority. No one report to them, rather they report to their own groups. Don't give anyone performances appraisal or promotions or raises. Do decide on the vision by persuasion, not question. Because the success it is not by an individual, it is because of the whole team. So the leadership has nothing to do with authority. It, it has to do with knowledge and being a servant leader. So the leader has to persuade and demonstrate that his way is the right way and the best way. So the idea here is actually to get rid of all the titles. Why? If people have a special title, they tend to do only things that seem a match for that title. And to protect that power of that role, they tend to hold their specific knowledge by eliminating the title. There were only team members. So there were no longer simply individuals with separate skills, but rather a team trying to move a goal to done. So imagine how much more productive a company or a university would be if everyone actually the work toward a common goal. So this come through its retrospective and transparency, it eliminates this kind of behavior almost immediately. It becomes obvious where the roadblocks are and where the waste is. Here our risk member, so the risk. So as we know, Scrum, it is actually allows us to reduce risk of failure. So the three most common types are market risk, technical risk, and financial risk. So in the other way, do people want what we are developing or building? Can we actually build it, the impossible projects? So can we really sell what we have built or developed? So according to this risk, management, we actually could identify the most three common risk. And this risk also to be continued on our next advanced course. Now, XP, the extreme programming. So, this scrum added a layer of coding for best practices. So, this extreme programming tells you how exactly, how to approach the coding. So there are three subtopics of this teaming framework, pair programming, test driven development. So all this actually uh, we added in our advanced course before I end. The important part of this scrum it changes the culture people work in, which can be scary for some. So indeed, the company had to give. Uh, had to get rid of employees who couldn't make the switch, not because they were incompet uh, incompetent, because they were hoarding information and knowledge for their own benefits. So to ensure their own dispensability, rather than helping the team and the company. So changing the culture, though, it what allows true excellence to emergence. So never ever settle where you are and please think on what is the little improvement that can be done right away that we make things better. So 
see you on next course. That's all from my side today. Thank you very much.